Hello and welcome back to Football Daily, where today we are looking at 10 of the most unforgivable moments the beautiful game has ever seen. Just a warning, some of these are pretty grim. The Togo bus shooting. In the build up to the 2010 African Cup of Nations, the Togo national team were caught up in one of the most horrific incidents in football history. As the Togolese squad, which included the likes of Emmanuel Adebayor, crossed the border from the Democratic Republic of Congo into Angola's oil rich territory of Cabinda, they were ambushed by a group of militant rebels in the midst of an independence war. Equipped with machine guns, the militants opened fire on the team bus, killing three and wounding several others. The fatalities included assistance manager Amelite Abolo, a sports journalist and the bus driver. Of the players, the worst affected was goalkeeper Kodjovi Obile, who was shot through his lower back and into the stomach, an injury that brought a premature end to his playing career. In the aftermath of the shooting, Togolese icon Adibayor, who luckily escaped injury free, had to literally carry his wounded teammates to the hospital in an attempt to save their lives. The then Manchester City striker retired from international football shortly after, before returning 18 months later after receiving safety assurances from the country's football federation. Rijkaard versus Villa. Legends such as Messi, Ronaldo and Totti have all been caught up in spitting scandals during their career, but none of them compared to the incident between Frank Rijkaard and Rudi Verla at Italia 90. When Germany and the Netherlands met in the second round of the tournament, tempers fled and meaty challenges flew. One such tackle saw Rijkaard booked and subsequently suspended for the next game. Incensed by the ban, the Ajax man spat in Verla's Shirley Temple X locks as he passed. To add insult to injury, Verla was then booked for complaining to the referee. But the spat was not over, as moments later Rijkaard took offence to Verla's challenge on Dutch stopper Hans van Brokelen, and the pair locked horns again. But this time the referee had had enough and swiftly dismissed both Rijkaard and Verla. As the pair traipsed towards the changing rooms, exchanging pleasantries along the way, Rijkaard again hocked up a lump of phlegm in Verla's barnet. That's absolutely disgusting. Verla eventually forgave his Dutch adversary and the pair went on to appear in a butter commercial together. How lovely. The Heysel disaster. On May the 29th, 1985, thousands of Liverpool fans flocked to Brussels to watch the Reds take on Juventus in the European Cup final. These were two club sides at the peak of their powers, taking home a combined 15 trophies between them in the previous nine years. However, the football on display that day will always be secondary to the tragedy in the stands. An hour before kickoff, a group of Liverpool fans scaled a fence into a neutral area containing mostly Juventus supporters. As the Juve fans tried to flee the wave of red hooligans, they found themselves pinned against a concrete wall with nowhere to go. The force of the fans being crushed against the barrier was so great that it collapsed under the pressure, killing 39 people. As a result, 14 Liverpool fans were found guilty of manslaughter and each jailed for three years, while English clubs were banned from competing in Europe for five seasons. Suarez's Bike Club Certain acts can be written off as fleeting moments of madness, but for someone to commit the same unsupporting act three times in four years is truly indefensible. We are, of course, talking about Luis Suarez's fondness for human flesh. The Uruguayan goal machine's checkered past includes racism, handballs and hair pulling, but his multiple biting incidents sit firm at the top of his rap sheet. Between 2010 and 2014, Giorgio Chiellini, Branislav Ivanovic and Ottoman Bacal were all unfortunate enough to be on the receiving end of Suarez's sizable gnashes. As punishment for the persistent foul play, the Barcelona forward was banned for over eight months in total, with each ban increasing in length. What is more disgraceful, however, is Suarez's apparent lack of remorse, shown most starkly in the fact that he still claims he lost his balance and fell into Chiellini teeth first. Hmm... Juventus match fixing. Serie A has never exactly been a beacon of good sportsmanship, with the 2006 match fixing scandal the latest in a long line of high profile skullduggery. Known as the Calciopoli scandal, the incident involved Fiorentina, Lazio, AC Milan, with the old lady of Turin, Juventus, right at the heart of matters. It all began with a series of illegal phone transmissions, uncovered by the Italian authorities, exposing the shady underbelly of Italian football. Allegations of referee payoffs, rival players receiving unjust suspensions and even a betting charge against Mr Juve himself, Gianluigi Buffon, all came to light. 
At the epicenter of this web of deceit was Juventus managing director Luciano Moggi, who was found guilty of having an unprofessional relationship with referee designators, effectively allowing him to choose who officiated Juve's games. While the allegations of bribery and match fixing were never proven indefinitely, Juventus were relegated to the second tier and stripped of their 2005 and 2006 titles, which Juve still count, shamelessly flying the flag for cheating. Hector Castro one of the most disturbing incidents on this list occurred in Texas during the 2010 World Cup when a man murdered his two-year-old stepdaughter because she wouldn't stop crying during a game. As the USA faced off against Ghana in the round of 16, McAllen resident Hector Castro decided to commit the most deplorable acts by strangling an innocent and helpless child. As if matters couldn't get any more horrific, the 28-year-old then proceeded to shove a screw down the toddler's throat in an attempt to make the death look accidental, a tactic quickly sussed out by the emergency services. Castro pleaded guilty to the murder and was sentenced to 45 years in jail. Sadly, racism appears to be etched into the fabric of certain clubs, who constantly embarrass themselves with their Stone Age views, and the ultras of former league and outfit SC Bastia are firmly in this bracket. When the Corsio based club hosted Nice in the league last season, large sections of the Blues fans held abuse at Mario Balotelli, with many making monkey noises. The taunting was so bad that the Italian forward took to social media after the game to ask, so is racism legal in France or only in Bastia? The disgraceful behaviour saw the club forced to temporarily close the East Stand, where the cavemen were housed. When it reopened, however, around 20 Bastia Ultras invaded the pitch during the warm-up to confront Lyon winger Memphis Depay, whose father is Ghanaian. The game was eventually abandoned due to safety concerns, adding another shameful chapter to Bastia's history. Sindelar and the Nazis Shortly after Nazi Germany had taken over Austria in what would be the first move of Hitler's attempt to dominate the continent, a match was arranged between Germany and Austria as a celebration of the latter returning to the Reich. However, the match was anything but competitive, as the Austrians had been advised not to score, despite being one of the best teams in the era. And for 69 minutes, the game went according to plan with Austria spurning chance after chance to keep the game at nil-nil. But one minute later, Matthias Sindelar went off script and slotted home a rebound to put them one up. Sindelar's goal was soon followed by a Schiasti Seth free kick, and the pair celebrated in front of high-ranking Nazis, throwing up the proverbial middle finger to the new overlords. Subsequently, Sindelar was relentlessly harassed by the Nazis' police force in the following months before being found dead with his girlfriend in their apartment. It was never proven that they were actually murdered by the Nazis, but it's a theory that's gained a lot of traction, resulting in Sindelar and Sess being immortalised as icons in Austria's struggle against fascism. Los Maneseros Massacre in 2009, Colombian amateur side Los Maneseros, or the Peanut Men, were travelling through Venezuela when they were kidnapped and slaughtered. The bodies of 11 of the 12 strong squad were recovered two weeks later in several locations across the Venezuelan state of Tachira, all with multiple gunshot wounds. The sole survivor of the attack was 19-year-old Manuel Cortez, who managed to pull through despite being shot through the neck. The attack on the peanut men, who got their name from selling nuts along the border, was widely believed to be the work of left-wing Colombian guerrilla group, the ELN. Sadly, no motive was ever proven and no arrests were ever made. The Butcher of Bilbao The Butcher of Bilbao is one of the most recognisable names in football, with his aggressive and downright disgraceful on-pitch behaviour going down in footballing folklore. Officially known as Gioco, the Spanish central defender is remembered most for his horrific challenge on Diego Maradona, which was so bad it almost ended the Golden Boy's career. During a heated discussion between the two in a Basque derby in 1983, Maradona highlighted the fact Bilbao were losing 3-0, resulting in him being placed firmly into the Spaniards' crosshairs. Moments later, as Maradona controlled the ball in the halfway line, the butcher smashed his stud straight into Maradona's calf, leaving him with a broken ankle and numerous torn ligaments. With the diminutive playmaker rolling around in agony, Gioco walked away with an aura of accomplishment before receiving a yellow card from the referee, which was rightly upgraded to an 18-game ban by the Spanish FA upon review. The worst part about it all, however, is that Gioco has had the boot that demolished Maradona's left leg mounted in a glass cabinet in his home. So I hope you guys liked that video. Let us know what you thought in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed that, why not check out the video on screen right now? I'm sure it is great. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe.